Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, we will now discuss that how banks in a in a modern monetary system in any economy okay, play an important role in this uh, transaction and how bank also can create money supply or increase money supply that we will discuss right. So, before that say bank, what is bank? Okay. Bank is a financial institution. Okay which accept money uh, through deposits with the contract that whenever say I am going there to keep my money in their vault. Okay. With bank is actually legally signing a contract with me or like me all of us the customers of that bank. Whenever we, are, we will go to withdraw our money they are legally bound to return back. Okay. So, whenever of course, whenever means not in the midnight within the working hours of the bank. Okay. So, whenever we will go to withdraw our money, they are legally or they are they are telling us that they will return your money whenever uh, you will come to withdraw your money. Okay. So, in that way, bank is an organization which keep money or which collect money in terms of deposit from its customers that is bank. Now, uh, whenever bank is collecting some money through deposits through me, you and other people right, uh, bank is always uh, bank used to pay some rate of interest to us that is called monetary rate of interest okay, or nominal rate of interest that is called nominal rate of interest, rate of interest. Okay. There is another concept called real rate of interest, real rate of interest. I am coming uh, banks operation real net of interest uh, that actually came these two concepts came into the context right. So, nominal rate of interest is basically the uh, rate of interest uh, which is on the basis of nominal money. Okay. I am keeping my 100 rupee in the bank and say after one year bank will give me uh, rate of interest of 5 percent. So, 5 rupee bank will give me in addition of that 100 rupee what is my uh, capital or what is my uh, principal. Okay. So, that rate of interest 5 percent what we are referring that is called nominal rate of interest. But what is the real rate of interest? Real rate of interest we can think of say uh, I am lending say 1 kg of rice today to you after 1 year uh, say perhaps you will return me back uh, 1 kg and 100 gram of rice. If that is the case we can tell that real rate of interest is 10 percent. In the sense that rate of interest is defined on the basis of real commodity or in terms of kind okay, that we can think of that is real rate of interest. Now, how we can quantify or monetary or quant quantify or how we can get monetary equivalence of real rate of interest. So, definitely uh, if price level uh, ch changes from one period to another. Okay, the 100 rupee whatever value is 100 rupee today, it may not have same valuation tomorrow, same purchasing power it may not have tomorrow if price level increases actually it purchasing power falls, if price level falls it purchasing power increases right. So, the real rate of interest if it is denoted by R, R is basically rough approximately equals to nominal rate of interest say I minus pi, pi is the rate of inflation. Okay, so, this is real rate of interest, this is nominal rate of interest, and this is rate of inflation, or rate of inflation. Okay. So, there is a relationship real rate of interest is approximately equals to nominal rate of interest adjusted with the rate of inflation. Okay. So, you can understand that uh, monetary value of today's 100 rupee may not be no longer to, uh, 100 rupee tomorrow. 
okay its purchasing power may go, go, go down if rate of inflation is positive okay so that is why this kind of actually its its exact relationship is r equals to i minus pi by 1 plus pi adjusted by this 1 plus pi factor in the denominator anyway so you need not bother we can derive that we can establish this relationship but that is not the scope that is not within the scope of this course okay so you can roughly uh, because inflation and uh, uh, consumer price index and all different uh, types of price index we have discussed in that chapter this uh, these two concepts of rate of interest are there uh, we missed that so that is why since it came in this context so i am i am telling so you can roughly uh, remember that this is the relationship real rate of interest is approximately equals to nominal rate of interest minus rate of inflation okay anyway anyway so what i just uh, telling that bank is uh, and collecting money from us as deposit right and bank is paying rate of interest to us so how bank will give that extra money okay so actually when bank is collecting that money no bank is not keeping idle all that collected money uh, in its vault okay yes it is keeping some uh, portion of uh, that money in its vault okay and remaining portion it is lending because lot of people go to take uh, loan from the bank education loan housing loan lot of car loan lot of loans are there no so people take the loan from the bank so through this loan or in terms of loan actually bank is lending money to the customers who is looking for loan and you will see that the rate at which bank is lending that is little bit above than the rate at which bank is paying to us as the customer as the deposit holders right so that margin from their bank is uh, getting some profit okay so that is the bank's operation roughly uh, bank's operation okay so anyway so uh, and how that bank can create money supply within an economy look bank uh, from its experience uh, first of all whatever money it is collecting through deposit from the customers right it can't keep entirely in its vault okay uh, to meet up whenever you are coming to uh, give, uh, for withdrawing your money to meet up your demand it is not keeping uh, in its vault so it is roughly keeping a percentage of that say maybe 10 percent of that it is keeping in its vault okay why 10 percent bank presume that it is sufficient to keep only 10 percent is enough 10 percent or 5 percent whatever it is okay some percentage of that okay because bank is confident that it is not the case that all the people will come one single day uh, to withdraw all of their money that is not usually happen in reality. Not only that in every day to day business although few people come to withdraw their money people few people few customer also come to deposit their money. So, bank uh, from its own experience they understand that although that some stipulated guidelines from central bank is also there you have to keep minimum that many percentage that is called CRR cash reserve ratio we are coming to that ok. There is a stipulated uh, percentage uh, uh, or stipulated guidelines are there from the central bank. Central bank is basically in any country uh, there is a central bank like in India it is called reserve bank of India ok. It regulate and monitor all the banking business uh, houses ok. The, uh, banks what is operating within that country both public sector banks private sector banks foreign banks whoever uh, which is uh, operating within the that economy there is a central bank in India like reserve bank of India it is monitoring and controlling all the uh, banks right. So, reserve bank has certain stipulated guidelines that minimum that many percent uh, bank has to keep in terms of cash in its board that is called cash reserve ratio CRR. And in any case uh, that from the bank's experience what I was telling that it knows that only a fraction of the um, uh, total uh, collected deposit money it can keep idle at, at its vault uh, to run day to day uh, transaction uh, activities and remaining thing it is giving as loan to the loan seekers ok to earn income interest income from the uh, loan getters right. Okay, and, and, and that, uh, that from there it is getting some profit. Okay. So, look at here suppose that uh, that CRR is 10 percent or bank is keeping 10 percent as cash in its vault. Now, suppose I am depositing 100 rupee to the bank. So, what bank is keeping 10 rupee out of that 
in its vault okay and remaining 90 rupee it is giving to as loan to the loan seekers okay we are assuming that uh, enough demand for loan is there we are assuming if that is the case okay now this 90 rupee right who is taking right they are using that 90 rupee to uh, participate in some transaction right they are also purchasing goods and services or investment they are investing right somewhere right that 90 rupee they are wherever they are spending right to whom they are putting those people also can deposit that in the bank not necessarily the same bank branch maybe some other branch of the same bank maybe some different bank also but that money is coming back as deposit in in the banking system to the entire banking system of that country so out of that 90 rupee okay that 90 rupee is going to the bank again okay and out of that 10 percent means 9 rupee bank is keeping in its vault as idle and 81 rupee it is giving again as loan so in that way it is creating again and again the money supply now look at here until this level how many total money is created within the society 100 rupee only but that is performing 100 plus 90 plus 81 that many money so in that way bank can create bank means not a single bank the entire banking system of an economy of a country can create how much money supply this is 100 okay uh, so first it is 100 uh, plus 100 whole into 1 minus r that r is this 10 percent okay so it is r is 10 percent means 0 0.1 so this is 0 0.9 plus then 100 whole into 1 minus r whole square because that 1 minus r whole square because the, this is in our 100 in our example this is basically 90 because r is 10 percent r equals to 10 percent okay so remaining thing is going so 10 percent means 90 percent of 100 is 90 rupee this is basically 100 into 1 minus r is 90 rupee that into again 1 minus r that is 81 rupee plus in that way it is creating okay and it, it can go we can think of an infinite series okay so it basically if you take 100 it will be 1 plus 1 minus r plus uh, 1 minus r square plus in that way okay say 1 minus r r is a fraction r is a fraction 10 percent so 1 minus r is also a fraction so suppose 1 minus r i am timing as q so this is basically 100 whole into 1 plus q plus q square plus q q plus dot 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 it is an infinite series so this will land to 100 whole into 1 by 1 minus q if you if you if you do this okay you will get that it will reduce to this thing 1 by 1 minus q how you can see you just you just multiply this third bracketed term with 1 minus q we will see that you will landing with 1 ok so that is 1 minus q and q is 1 minus r so that means uh, this implies 1 minus q is basically 1 minus 1 plus r so r so this is basically 100 whole into 1 by r so this factor 1 by r r is the uh, 10 percent if the example we are taking r is the 10 percent so 1 by r you understand ok 10 times right so 100 rupee can create 1000 rupees of credit within the society ok if this r is 10 percent ok so that is the thing so banking system can generate money or can create cre so this 1 by r this component is called credit creation multiplier so you can understand from where this name is coming credit creation multiplier ok so 100 rupee it is creating 100 into 1 by r amounts of credit within the society that is why credit is created multiple amount of 100 rupee so that is the multiplier factor 1 by r in this particular case if r is 10 percent it will be 10 r value is uh, 1 by 10 percent no 1 by 10 percent means 1 by 0 0.1 so that will be 10 so credit creation multiplier value will be 10 so that is why i am telling 100 rupee can create 1000 rupees credit through this banking system 
right so this is called credit creation multiplier in any case so banks in this way any modern economy right banks can create a lot of credit okay and in that way bank can create or generate money supply increase money supply by this through its regular day to day business activities or transaction activities okay that's the thing and in 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 any any economy right uh, money supply okay certain components are they are called m0 they are those are denoted by m0 as those are called same zero is called narrow money okay then m1 and then m2 and m3 i think m3 is called broad money and certain other components are there broad money okay m2 no m0 i am sorry m0 is called reserve money okay this is called reserve money this is called narrow money and this is called m3 is called broad money but what are the components of that m0 m1 m2 m m3 it is there in your book okay i also usually forget the different components and all because that check transaction okay and then deposit also uh, different types of deposits are there no uh, current account deposit saving account deposit then time deposit and so on right time deposit even time deposit with different kinds of maturity maybe 1 year maybe 5 years maybe 10 years and so on right so lot of things are there uh, i mean other than this kinds of uh, deposits right lot of different uh, commercial papers are there monetary instruments are there like uh, cd this is called certificates of deposits it is available in the bank okay this is some sort of uh, commercial paper which has some monetary value right so certificates of deposit and lot of this kinds of things are there in that monetary system and what are their respective components and all what is the definition of this m0 m1 m2 m3 those are there in your book uh, nothing as as such to understand those components but you have to learn those things so one advice is that whatever is there in your book that is as per the federal reserve system federal reserve system federal reserve system is the central banking agency in the united states of america okay lot of federal banks are there say federal bank of say maybe kansas city uh, federal bank of some other city like that so those federal banks all together called federal reserve system which is the central banking authority of united states so what i am advising that you those definition of m0 m1 m2 m3 as per federal reserve system may be slightly different uh, of those definition as per the reserve bank of india for our country so i am advising all of you to go through this these components okay whatever is there in your book but those portions will be replaced uh, re, should be replaced by uh, the counterpart components collected by reserve bank of india website so in india the central banking authority is reserve bank of india if you visit their website okay uh, what is and look for what is the definition of m0 m1 m2 m3 or this reserve money narrow money broad money all these things and what are the components within each of those uh, uh, m0 m1 m2 m3 and all those things you can easily you can easily get that right so i am advising you should know all of this components all of these components are components of money supply within a country money supply within a country money supply within a country so those components you will get in your book but i am advising you you please replace those components or their definition by whatever is there in the reserve banks of india website so the components are there note down here it's a lot of components i have to spend the time to note down them here be before you I, i which i don't want to uh, all of you are advised to look into reserve bank of website for the definition of each of these components 
and what are those like say uh, reserve money reserve money is telling that currency in circulation currency in circulation means that currency notes and coins whatever is that under the circulation in the within the country what is there with me you all the all the agents all the people of that country and the with the banking system okay those are called currency in circulation plus bankers deposit with the rbi plus other deposit with the rbi so for instance m0 which is called reserve money reserve money that is basically currency this i am telling as per the reserve bank of india's definition currency in circulation plus bankers deposit with the RBI, RBI means Reserve Bank of India plus other deposits, other deposits with the RBI. Okay. So, this, these are the M0. Similarly, M1 equals to some M0 plus something else are there, something like that in that way. So, I do not want to, I do not want to uh, discuss all of those things here to uh, to spend our time rather you you look at those and what are each of those components uh, that is there in the reserve bank of india that is the good guidelines for you to study let me quickly finish some other concepts in this in this regard okay so bankers deposit with rbi is what see as we told since we are discussing m0 in any case as per reserve bank of india so let us discuss so currency in circulation what is that we are we are defined so all those currencies if you combine together Okay, that is the currency in circulation. Okay, that many says maybe in India uh, um, uh, today uh, it may be say 500 crore amount of currency in circulation. So, that is this amount. Okay, then bankers deposit as we told the Reserve Bank of India is the central bank of this country uh, of India. Uh, so, this central bank is basically the act as a banker of different governments our central government different state governments also across india is a federal country no so many different states are there right so each of these states they may have their deposit or their some deposit account with the reserve bank of india right it's a banker of the governments also not only that it is banker of the banking houses also so many banks are there no say public sector banks say state bank of india punjab national bank like those no allahabad bank so many banks are there similarly some private banks are there say icici bank okay then uh, some others hdfc bank Okay, those kinds of uh, some private banks are there. Similarly, some foreign banks are there. Say Standard Chartered Bank, HSBC, 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 HSBC is basically I think Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation. Its full name, right? It's a it's a foreign bank. Okay, so all these three categories of uh, banks, as per the ownership, like publicly owned banks. Publicly means government owned banks. Okay, and then privately owned banks, and then foreign banks, right? all these banks to do uh, to uh, engage into banking operation or ban banking business in india they have to follow certain guidelines which are stipulated or mandated by the reserve bank of india okay and in that process they have to have certain account also with the reserve bank of india okay those accounts that is called bankers deposit account with the rbi reserve bank of india so how much total amount of money are there with, with those kinds of bankers deposits with the rbi those things also should we should consider into account because this is plus okay and similarly other deposits with the rbi this other deposits with the rbi mostly maybe government deposits what i am telling no uh, central government and different state governments or federal different uh, states of the India, okay. The, they have their uh, deposit account to the Reserve Bank, all those kinds of whatever money is there or how much uh, money is deposited with the Reserve Bank of India by through those accounts, their combination, all these three combination is called reserve money. That is one component of money supply in India. So, in this way, you have to go through uh, Reserve Bank of India for other three components M1, M2, and M3. Okay? We are skipping that. Let me let me quickly uh, quickly 
uh, quickly introduce here what is the how that supply of money can be controlled by Reserve Bank of India within a country. Like when, when inflation happens, what is inflation? Inflation means whatever uh, real goods and services are there uh, for transaction available for transaction in real economy, right? more amount of money is actually rushing behind them. As a result, price level is increasing, right? See, suppose say 10 kg of rice is produced, right? And suppose say 400 rupee is enough to, for uh, that 10 kg of rice to be transacted uh, smoothly within the society, because per per uh, per kg of rice price is maybe 40 rupee. Okay. Now suppose instead of 400 rupee, 800 rupee. Are there uh, people or potential customers who are coming to purchase that rice? They have 800 rupees in their pocket and they want to spend that for purchasing rice. What will happen? Definitely, rice price will increase, right? Instead of uh, 40 rupees per kg per hour, it will go to 80 rupees per kg, right? So, that is called inflation. Inflation is basically increasing the general price level, right? So, indirectly, I am, I am uh, interpreting that inflation in this way more amount of money is rushing behind relatively less amount of real goods and services, right. So, when inflation is there, that means money supply is more, that is why inflation is there. Central bank in India, it is Reserve Bank of India, they can take certain policies through which they can try to control money supply to keep price level in some acceptable uh, level price in some acceptable level, right. So, what are those instruments? One is called uh, bank rate. What is that bank rate? Bank rate is basically when uh, different banks uh, take loan from the reserve bank, banks that bankers deposit with the reserve bank of India in M 0's component we have discussed in the last, last slide, this slide bankers deposit with the reserve bank of India. So, through that deposit account banks can take loan from the reserve bank of India or bank can deposit money to reserve bank of India. Okay. So, when banks take loan from the reserve bank of India at what is the rate of interest Reserve Bank of India deep charge that is called bank rate. Now, suppose why bank will take loan from Reserve Bank of India? Suppose okay, bank to keep 10 percent of that money in their vault. Now, suddenly that today uh, the demand for so many people came for withdraw their money that amount of money whatever is stored in the Reserve Bank's uh, respective bank's vault that is not enough. So, as an emergency, this bank can take some loan from the Reserve Bank of India okay, to meet up this demand. Okay. So, then they have to pay some rate of interest to the Reserve Bank, right? So, that rate of interest is called bank rate. Now, if Reserve Bank of India increase that bank rate, suppose earlier that bank rate was 10 percent, now it is 12 percent. So, what will happen? So, taking a loan for these banks to take a loan from the RBI that it will be more costly the rate of interest they have to pay earlier they were paying 10 percent now it is 12 percent. Okay. So, loan is more costly becoming more costly to the banks. right? So, then bank will try to take as less loan as possible from the reserve bank of India because it is becoming more costly. Any costly thing we try to always purchase less or uh, okay. so that way. So, as a result uh, they will take less loan, they will give less loan to the uh, general people or loan seekers to the banks. Okay. So, in that way money supply can be curtained within the society. So, this is one instrument called bank rate. Okay. Bank rate in India it has two components, one is called repo rate, another is called reverse repo rate. What is their respective definition? If any of you are interested, you can look at in the Reserve Bank of India website, those definitions are there. So, broadly these things are called bank rate, rate at which commercial banks take loan from the central bank. Okay. Okay. So, through bank rate reserve bank can uh, central bank can control money supply within a country. Similarly, CRR that is called cash reserve ratio as we told sometimes back cash reserve ratio. I am get I am um, collecting 1000 rupee as deposit. So, reserve Bank of India mandate is that 
for all the banks minimum 10 percent CRR they have to maintain. If that is the case, so out of 1000 rupee I have to mandatorily keep 100 rupee as cash in my vault and up to 900 rupee I can keep more than that as cash in my vault no issue, but minimum 10 percent I have to maintain. So, up to 900 rupee I can give loan to the customers or loan seekers. Right. So, of course, this CRR is another instrument for the Reserve Bank of India to control money supply. How? See, when uh, Reserve Bank of India or Central Bank wants uh, to reduce the money supply, they can increase the CRR. So, suppose earlier CRR was 10 percent, now I am making 15 percent. So, banks are forced to keep more amount of money as cash idle in, your, in their vault. So, they cannot lend that much money to the people. So, less amount of money will come to the people's hand less amount of money will come to the uh, sir, under the circulation within the economy. Okay? So, price level will have a come down, we'll, we'll, um, we can expect to have a tendency to come down. right? So, CRR is cash reserve ratio is another instrument by the reserve bank of India or central bank by which using which it can control money supply within an economy. Similarly, third SLR, it is SLR, it is called statutory liquidity ratio. What is that? All the banks they have to in they will invest, but their investments a certain percentage may be 20 percent or 30 percent some stipulated amount is there what is the SLR currently in India that is there in Reserve Banks of India website if you visit you can see I cannot remember that. Okay? But what is the idea of SLR? SLR is that banks are forced to invest in certain government or RBI allowed stipulated commercial papers, specific commercial papers you have to invest there. You, so, when I am a bank, I collect a lot of money through deposits, but I am not that much flexible to lend those monies to any, anyone whom I wish. I have to keep CRR as cash in my vault, I have to deposit SLR proportion of my deposit to stipulated uh, instrument as my investment okay? and remaining thing I can give uh, uh, to loan seekers as I wish. Okay? So, again that SLR is another instrument through which central bank can control money supply within a society. Why? Because when I want less amount of money to be transacted to be circulated under the people's hand, I will increase this SLR. So, whenever central bank wants to curtain the money supply within the society, to reduce the price level within the society, it can use all this instrument and it can increase all these instruments. And obviously, vice versa also is true. If central bank wants money supply to be increased within the society, it can reduce any of these components or all of those components or a combination of those components. right? Another is there, it is called open market operation, open market operation. What is that? What I am telling through SLR, right? Banks are forced to invest uh, a section of their investable resources in stipulated certain commercial papers as mandated by the central bank, right? Those commercial, so when I am purchasing those commercial papers, right? Those commercial papers are with me, I am a bank, okay? So, when central bank wants uh, that uh, people needs to have less money in their hand, uh, in circulation within the society, then central bank will uh, sell this kind of commercial paper to the banks. As a result, when banks will purchase those commercial papers, banks has to pay money to the central bank. As a result, bank will have individual commercial banks will have less amount of investable resources or uh, lending, lend, uh, lendable resources in their hand. Okay? As a result, supply of money will be uh, cut in within the society, within the economy. Okay? That is the open market operation through which bank can intervene. So, these are the instruments using which a central bank can control money supply within the economy. Okay? Let me just, uh, just uh, yeah, two more concepts not related to this uh, banking things as such, but one component is related. Uh, usually in the business newspaper or common sense economics, you will uh, frequently come across two ter terminology. One is called fiscal policy vis a vis monetary policy. So, 
So, when we are telling that central bank can use these, these so many instruments it has to utilize or to control money supply within the economy, those instruments or this policy when central bank is taking those are called monetary policy. So, monetary policy is taken by the monetary authority of an economy, mostly the central bank. Okay. But what is the fiscal policy? Fiscal policy is the policy by the government. Like say we told that why our GDP has 5 components or 4 components C plus I plus G plus X minus M if you can remember. Okay, this G is the government spending, right? government consumption expenditure. right? So, this government spending investment also have a may have a part of government investment. right? This how much government will invest in say maybe uh, in education sector or health sector like that different sector governments invest or government spend some money. right? So, how much they will invest that decision usually taken by the government, okay, government central government or different state governments also. Government decide how much they will spend uh, in which, which head of their uh, expenditure. right? So, those government decision or government spending are called altogether as a part of fiscal policy. So, fiscal policy is the policy related to government income expenditure kind of activities and monetary policies are related to uh, are part of the monetary authorities mostly central banks instruments or policies through which it can try to control money supply within an economy. Okay. So, just uh, uh, as a part of this discussion we are just introducing these two concepts you should be having some understanding what is by fiscal policy what we refer by monetary policy what we refer. So, these are all about what uh, are the part of our syllabus okay. and as you understand that macroeconomics we are actually we covered selective uh, selectively certain important terminology and important concepts with this. Uh, we finished our this course, I hope all of you will enjoy uh, and take care.